Round 10 sees us in Riga. This is the second time the championship has visited the Latvian capital. And despite the weather in 2016, the venue was an instant success. Q1 started under clear skies and bright sunshine, and that wasn't the only thing for the Latvian crowd to cheer about, with Rainis Nittish lining up in the first race. Off the start, the EKS trio got away well with only Kevin Eriksson trying to spoil the party. He was squeezed out in the first corner, and from then on, the Audis ran in a train, the crowd going mad every time Nittish passed them. With no one to challenge them, all three took the Joker together, allowing Hakenen to take the flag. The Audi party continued in the next race with Matthias Ekstrom getting the whole shot over fellow DTM legend Timo Scheider. While Ekstrom gapped the field, things were looking a lot worse for Timo. A small fire under the car very quickly turning into a big one. Ekstrom took the win, but all eyes were on Scheider. He launched the car over the line and then had to exit via the wrong door. A very scary moment indeed. Johan Christophson got a start worthy of a world championship leader and then set about the job of destroying the timesheets as usual. Behind him, Baumannis and Block had a scrap which gave the local crowd something to focus on, with Block jokering to find some space and then putting a pass on Nafik as he rejoined. Christophson, meanwhile, had set the fastest lap of the day and went on to take his customary P1 position with one race to go. Solberg was in that final encounter and got the perfect start to challenge his teammate's benchmark. Behind him, it was contact to plenty as the others jostled for position. Timmy Hansen holding on from Loeb, who also lost out to Tim Yarnov. Solberg pushed hard and set rapid lap times with incredible consistency, but it wasn't quite enough to match the seemingly unstoppable Johan Christofferson. He takes Q1. On to Q2 in torrential rain, and the Scheider question was immediately answered when the first grid was formed without him. Francois Duval used his many years of WRC experience to save a couple of big moments and take the race win. Race two and Kevin Eriksson had a problem retiring at the start. Ken Block got away well and was unlucky to be collected by Balmanis on the brakes at turn one. No one really to blame in the tricky conditions. Granholm ran Balmanis close at the end of the race, but it was a popular home win for the Latvian. Sebastian Loeb got an absolutely perfect start in his race, moving across from the outside of the grid to hit the front immediately. Andreas Backrud was last as they exited the first corner and set about chasing the pack down. He got Muller on lap one and made a fantastic move on Rainis Nittich on lap two. On different Joker strategies, the result would come down to the merge. It looked like Loeb had got it until Backward found something extra in the very last corner and took the flag by the tiniest of margins. The last race of Q2 was a story of VW versus Audi. Toppy Hakenen was into the first corner first, but Christofferson was pushing incredibly hard, desperate to find a way past. Following confusion as to what lap he was on, Christofferson followed Toppy into the Joker and then lifted at what he thought was the finish, allowing Ekstrom to claim second. It was far worse for his teammate Solberg, though. The double World Rallycross champion having an altercation with the barriers, which would see him drag the wounded car home for last in Q2. At the other end of the table, it was Toppy Hakenen who set the fastest time of the session and claimed the overnight top qualifier spot. On then to Q3, more tricky conditions for the drivers. Dry and wet yesterday, damp this morning. How do you pick your start RPM? We were riding on board here. I think it was with uh, Ken Block in his run down towards the first corner. This race, there was about Nico Muller and Kevin Hansen. Kevin doing an absolutely stellar job, remember, in last year's car. Managed to get out in front of Nico and took the chequered flag. Off the line again. This time we're on board with Gronholm. We've got so many on board this weekend, we really are treating you. Tim Yarnov look, managed to get around the outside of Rainis Nittich, which put him on the inside in turn two. Nittich wisely managed to avoid contact, ended up over the gravel on the outside, but held on to the position. Tim Yarnov just in front of him, was about to make a mistake down in the gravel section. Whether or not we'll see that, I'm not sure, but he ran a little bit wide. And that then meant that Christopherson, of course, who checked out early doors, smashed it. Top of the timesheet by an absolutely huge margin. On to the final race of Q3. 
and still wheel spin for everybody. Look, definitely trying to find traction up towards the first corner. Hakenen managed to get the whole shot. He was on the inside, but Sebastian Loeb was right with him. Now, Hakenen then made a mistake in the gravel section. There it is. Look at Loeb. He can't quite get past, but between him and Farin, his spotter wisely making the decision to slot off into the Joker lap. The race then continued. Backward slotting off towards the left. Sebastian Loeb, though, right on the back look of Toppy, having already made his Joker. Toppy did manage to shut the door on backward. That was backward slotting up the inside of uh, Toppy's teammate Ekstrom. This was Loeblug taking the lead as Hakenen went for the Joker on the final lap. And watch this, backward versus Hakenen. Backward slotted inside Loeb yesterday, but Hakenen today was wise to it, kept the car tight on the inside and held the position. First race in Q4 and the track was drying. It was Ken Block who got the whole shot. Ryala there and Duval together in turn two. Block really needing to push to try and drag himself up into the semi-finals. Choo Choo had pushed a little bit too hard, hit the wall and broke the suspension. Off the line. Still looks a bit damp and greasy down there. Is this on the run down to turn one? So this was Bauman. I mean, he almost ends up on the wall on the inside here, doesn't he? Yeah, it, it was a very tight squeeze, trying to fit three people through a tight chicane. Yeah, something's got to give and that was where Bauman lost out. I'm a big fan of a, of a left or a right or at least two corners, basically, uh, you know, at, at the end of a, a lap, because I think, sorry, the start of a lap, I think it makes it exciting off the start. How, how do you find it as a driver? Stressful, I guess. Stressful, yeah, because you don't know who's going to be the person who's who's on your inside, pushing you out towards those tyres, and those tyres are the danger zone. Look at Timmy, absolutely fully fired up, mouth open, really, really focused. He's got in the time he needed. I think he could have gone quicker because he made that mistake, of course, we saw. It's obviously not up to full dry pace yet. There was that. I suppose it wasn't too bad. Maybe a little bit deep. Possibly not as tidy as Timmy would have liked it. And the times are not as quick as we have seen in full dry Q1. So the track's still developing. It's on board with Nittish at home here off the line. Didn't get the best of starts. He'd have seen Baccarat inside him at this point. Do you brave it out, Dan? I mean, what do you do? Yeah, obviously, uh, if, you, if you didn't have that big tyre wall that's sticking out right in front of you, you, you might want to try and brave it. But you've got to be a bit careful. You, you can't squeeze in too tight on the person on the inside in case you touch wheels and, and that sends you off. Here's, here's Ekstrom's moment here. Two wheels on the kerb and it just backed him into the corner, but he handled here it is, here is. Yes, Matthias, send it. Hashtag said, go hard or go home. He nearly went home, but that was absolutely mega. That's got to be save of the year, hasn't it? Yeah, he, he looks so calm as well. He didn't, didn't I did, he's love it. <laughs> just a little bit of extra lock more than I'd normally like to use. I, I just like the throttle up. You know, the wall zone is just there. Brilliant piece of car control by the world champion. Well done, Matthias. Uh, Backward tried really hard here, but, you know, Ekstrom was your man. Into the right-hander on the Joker. Tidy, tidy, tidy. Perfect run. And Ekstrom, at the minute, is at the top of Q4 with one race still to go. So off the line, look at Lowe. You see that, that sideways moment? I was sure he was going to go backwards, Dan. Yeah, it looked like uh, he had a lot of wheel spin and wasn't going to get the traction to go, but... The car just hooked up and you see he just took off, just pulled in front of EWs and the way he's gone. Great move by Scheider too. Aggressive, admittedly, he's round the outside here. Mirror off Kevin Lee. You see the mirror fly up in the air with yeah. him from the other shot. And you can see there Solberg had to get out the back of uh, those two. But Scheider in aggressive race, I'm a bit gutted he had the fire because you know, it could have been a good result for him here. Yeah, he's, he's showing good pace this weekend. If it wasn't for that fire, we could have seen him a lot higher up. But Nice to see him pay the team back as well, isn't it? But, you know, having, having had them work so hard to get the car back together, Scheider managing to get out today and put in a couple of decent performances. Loeb takes Q4. Where does that leave everyone ahead of the semi-finals? Johan Christofferson, the world championship leader. Will he be the world champion when we leave here? Alongside him, the current world champion. Wow, Christofferson looks like he's on brand new boots. Row two, Andreas Backrud and Timmy Hansen. Those two guys will fight to make it through. And backrud has got new tyres as well. And bringing up the rear, Rainis Nittish. The crowd will go nuts for him. And Niklas Gronholm made it through in Q4. So great job. This will be fantastic. And this is the action that they came to see. So watch for Baccarat here. Dan, talk us through it. Yeah, so Baccarat, he's, he's on the outside of Hansen here. And realistically, he's, he's going to get a bit squeezed. But he's got a wheel up there. And it's just enough. He's just enough. He's got enough of his car up there to, to make the gap. And the other guys just follow him. The door is open then. 
Nitish was brave there, wasn't he? He really threw it in, and that, I mean, that cost Hansen time, and that allowed Granholm to get him in the back row. And then Granholm get past Nitish. So where Nitish carried that extra pace in, he actually then lost out to Granholm on the exit. Yeah, he uh, he had to break later than he hoped, and it meant he couldn't get on the power as soon as he as soon as he wanted to. Now we've seen people do this all weekend. So you saw there Hansen with the black lines going down on the road. This is Nitish, so Nitish trying to go up the inside on the previous corner. You can see the damage he did to the rear. It seems that the tyre held up for the rest of the final, but you know, clever tactics because he had to hold on to that position. He wasn't even in third, but he knew if Nitish got past, he'd be fifth, and then he has no chance of going through. Yeah, exactly. You know, the guys in front of him could have made a mistake, and so he had to hold on for all he could. Even though it cost him time to shut the door on the inside there, good job by him, but not enough to make it through. It's Christopherson who goes through with Ekstrom and Bakkerud. On pole, last year's Latvia winner, his sole win in the World Rallycross Championship, Sebastian Loeb. Next to him, Petter Solberg, double World Rallycross champion. Row two, Toppy Haken, and he was overnight top qualifier. Kevin Hansen next to him. What a performance in last year's Persia. Kevin would love to make it through to the final. And on the back row, Nico Muller on only his second outing, books the fourth Audi into the semi-finals. A third of the places in the semis going to Audi. Fantastic by EKS. Solberg and Loeb with good starts. Haken and Lutz have got a fantastic start. There is almost up in between them. Haken and now into the side of Kevin Hansen. Oh, sideways. Solberg's gone sideways. They smashed around. Solberg is hit hard in the side. Solberg is there then, so Solberg is stopped. They're saying stop the race. So Solberg is obviously feeling that he needs the race to be stopped. We've got yellow flags being waved and we've got a red flag. Red flag out in the joker lap, so we have red flags. And the race has been neutralised. It's unusual in the World Rally Cross Championship. We're very much hoping to get semi-final two back underway as soon as possible. On the front row, on his own, last year's winner, Sebastian Loeb. Row two, Toby Hakenen and Kevin Hansen. Row three, Nico Muller and Yanis Baumanis. So there was Loeb, look, untroubled. Look at the start from row two there as well that Toppy got. He got an absolutely mega start. This was Balmanis. So it was a battle really between Balmanis and Kevin, wasn't it, here? Yeah, so he's got to try and push his way back over us. He's going to end up in those tyres, and, yeah, tyres are hard. Look at Kevin there with the contact. Had at least one wheel, if not two, in the air. Balmanis had to give way there, didn't he, because of tyres on the outside. Loeb, Haken, and... Um, yeah, mid there's no contact there, is there? No. It's got to be mechanical. Yeah. Uh, to me, it looks like drive shaft, maybe. And that, of course, was an opportunity for Balmanis to go up one position straight away. And by now, he'd have been thinking, I could do this. Look at Kevin, holding the tight line, then realises, oh, he's going round my outside, tries to get on the gas, bit of contact. I actually think that's a fair pass. What do you reckon? Yeah, yeah, that was that was brilliant. I'm surprised that Yanis is able to find the traction out so wide. But, yeah, he made it work, and he got through. He did, indeed. Ooh, contact there Ooh. from Kevin. Hmm. Mm. Not, yeah, what, what are your thoughts on that one, Dan? Um, racing incident. Yeah, <laughs> says the driver. Says the driver. Borderline, I think that was slightly in the side. But there you go, these guys race hard, and I don't want to see them stop racing hard. Let's be clear about that right now. I'd rather see them race hard and occasionally get told off than uh, be scared to make a move. Sebastian Loeb sliding the Peugeot 208 to victory in semi final number two. Up and over the jump and taking the check of flag. Well, one man will be ecstatic to have made it through to the final. That is Yanis Baumanis. Here is the lineup for the final here in Latvia. Johan Christofferson on pole position, Sebastian Loeb next to him. It's an Audi Row 2, Matthias Ekstrom and Nico Muller. And bringing up the rear, Andreas Backrud and Yanis Baumanis. What can Baumanis do at home? Christofferson looking to wrap up the World Championship. He took his fifth win in a row. It'll be another record, but he doesn't care about that. He just cares about the big trophy. Green light and away. Sebastian Loeb moves across extra, trying to guard the inside of him down into turn one. It is Christophson that leads. Backroom was left on the line. Balmanis has gone round the outside into P2. Go on, Balmanis at home in Latvia. Balmanis is up into P2. Extra has gone the inside of him, though he's lost the position already. Muller is in behind him. Balmanis has got good tracks on the exit. He rides all over the back of extra. Look, there's contact again between him and extra. Rides up behind Balmanis. Balmanis will be desperate at least to keep him behind him. He can't get in front of extra. He will be desperate to keep Muller behind him. Try and hold on backwards onto the back of this train. Pretty good by him. Matthias Ekstrom wins the Monster Energy Supercharger Award. Oh, back 
Kakarut, careful now, a bit naughty. He knows he backed out of that, didn't he? Yeah. If the positions remain like this, Johan Christofferson will be the world rallycross champion. He will have a gap of more than or equal to 60 points, and he will be unbeatable as we head to Estering for the second to last round. Christofferson is racing for the world championship. Balmanis is racing for a position on the podium at home in Latvia. I'd love to see him do it because I love a good home for him, but I think he's going to get beaten to the merge. Oh, he does. Balmanis drops back. That's the way it goes. Unlucky for Balmanis. The crowd still stand up for him as he comes. He's put up a brilliant fight here, probably the drive of the year for Balmanis. He's won his semi-final and he's won his final at the last three events. It's been three perfect scores in a row. It's going to be a fourth one here. He has broken every single record in the book. And as he comes around the right and the left, he's going to take his fifth win in a row, his sixth of the season. And Johan Christofsson is going to be crowned the 2017 World Rallycross Champion.